Throughout the late 19th and early 20th centuries, nationalism became a dominant force in global politics. It saw many peoples, including the Germans, the Italians, the Poles, the Bulgarians, the Romanians and the Turks, amongst many others, carve out national territories in which they and their people could live. This was because those people saw themselves and their neighbours as being part of a homogenous group. This idea that the same people should live in a single united political entity was also found throughout the Middle East and expressed itself in what's called pan-Arabism. Since this never happened, the question is, why not, and how close did the pan-Arabist dream come to fruition? Well, the idea of a unified Arab world started to be taken seriously in the late 19th century in opposition to Ottoman rule. During the First World War, many of these Arab nationalists rebelled against the Ottoman Empire and worked with the Entente powers to establish an independent Arab state. The Entente had agreed to this, but after the war was over, no. As such, Arab nationalism's aim continued to be the removal of imperial powers from their lands, and these nationalists were given outside help most from Egypt and Iraq. It wasn't until after World War II and the collapse of British and French rule in the region that pan-Arabism really started to pick up. With the Cold War raging onwards, both the USA and USSR were looking to expand their influence in the region and for many there, this wasn't on. Because much of the pan-Arabist ideology focused on removing all foreign influence from the region. It was also at this point that the overwhelming majority of Arab leaders, barring Lebanon, backed the creation of an Arab state. Yet this alone wasn't enough and here we can learn from the unification of Germany. Since unification was supported by most German leaders and the German people too. Yet it required several wars to achieve and the reason why is that much like Arab leaders, the Germans agreed that a state should be made, yet they couldn't agree on who would lead it. So, 1958 arguably saw the height of Arab nationalism when two attempts were made at building an Arab state. The first saw Egypt and Syria merge to become the United Arab Republic under Egyptian President Gamal Abdel Nasser. The unification came about after the people of Syria got a bit communisty. Thus, the Syrian leadership approached Nasser to unify the states and put down any potential issues. There were several problems though. The first was that Syria was mostly turned into an Egyptian colony and it had little to no voice in the union and also, whilst Nasser was no friend of communism, he wasn't exactly protective of the business interests of Syria's leaders and after numerous economic reforms they decided that this was a bad idea and in 1961 Syria declared its independence. The second Arab state of 1958 was the Arab Federation made from the merger of Iraq and Jordan whose kings were cousins. Now this union went nowhere because both had wildly different interests and neither could decide on who would be in charge. Not that the question mattered for long since Faisal II, the king of Iraq, was deposed in a coup shortly afterwards. After this there was one more notable attempt and this was in 1971 when a coup in Libya placed Muammar Gaddafi in charge, who promptly proposed a union with Egypt, Sudan and Syria. This was backed by both the leaders and peoples of these countries but it fell apart where nobody could decide on the details, notably who would be in charge. And ultimately it's this reason why the creation of an Arab state failed. The public backing had always been there and the region's leaders had always pushed for the unification of the Arab world. The problem was that they all thought that they were going to be the ones to lead it. Combine this with differing foreign policy goals, particularly between the pro-Western Iraq and the pro-Soviet Egypt and things get even more complicated. And it was these outside backers who had an interest in preventing the unification of the Arab world. Since a unified Arab state would certainly have been a formidable global power and at the height of the Cold War, nobody wanted the competition. I hope you enjoyed this episode and thank you for watching with a special thanks to my Patreon supporters James Bizanet, Colin Castleman, Danny Maloney, Marvin Cassell, Rob Waterhouse, John B. Gaze, Mo, Aaron the White, Michael Reynolds, James Castaneda, Gustav Swan, Marcus Arsner, Jordan Longley, James Castaneda, Gustav Swan, Marcus Arsner, Jordan Longley, Gareth Turner, Mr. Show, Rashid Ali, Spinning Three Plates, Phil De Oink Oink, David Silverman, Izzy, Winston Kaywood, Maggie Pakskowski, Lexi Schwinn, Spencer Lightfoot, Kelly Moneymaker, Robert Wetzel, Sky Chappelle and Anthony Beckett.